Hello, my fellow gnomes. How are you doing? Welcome back to episode 10. And today I want to talk about services. Now, at the moment, we've been looking at the workspace. So if I click any of these parts, you can see it's selected there, goal two, and all of these objects, in fact, they're all objects which are inside this workspace over here in the explore window. So if I was to click workspace, this little arrow here, collapse everything, and we can see everything is inside of it. Now, workspace is actually a service and we can see everything else linked in this explore window is also a service. So we've got players um, and that's will be where players who join the game will be displayed there. So it's currently empty, but if I was to click play, when my character joins the game, you can see now, oh yeah, there's something in the players folder or service and it's got my player there. We've also got core packages. Don't worry about this too much. It's just a bunch of default scripts. We've got lighting, which enables us to change the properties. We've got replicated first and replicated storage. Uh, this is to do with server and client side type things. Uh, we're not gonna go into that too much right now. Then we've got server script service and server storage. They're pretty useful. Our server script service allows us to put all our scripts in and server storage is just kind of like a storage folder that we can put things out the way if we don't want them to be in the game world or the workspace. Uh, then we've got all these starter folders, starter GUI, starter pack, and starter player. These are basically just things that uh, the player will start the game with. So for example, starter GUI, we could add in some user interface, so just some sort of 2D uh, graphics that they would then see uh, when they started the game, okay? And starter pack would be weapons, and start player, you can have scripts in there and so on. We've also got a few others, sound service chat, etc. Uh, but we're not going to go into all of them right now. So first things first, let's see if we can clear up some of our scripts a little bit. Now, so far we've put all of our scripts just inside workspace, but generally you want to keep things a little bit more organized. So we're going to select all of these scripts and I'm going to click and drag them down into server script service. Now, all this is is a pretty basic service. It's just like a folder really. So we can just chuck all these scripts in and they can run from there. And I can access my scripts from here then rather than them being in the workspace, which really you just want to be for physical uh, game parts. Uh, then the other thing is we don't really need these scripts at the moment. We can see they're all disabled. Uh, I'm not actually using any of them at the moment and I'm not using this tables one either. So I'll disable that. And then all these disabled scripts I'm gonna click and drag them into server storage. So they're tucked out of the way then. And I can also do this with parts as well. So all these models of the name rovers, I'm not using them at the minute. So I'm gonna click and drag that into server storage as well. And you notice when I do so, it's disappeared from the world then, but it's not deleted because if we ever want them back, I can just drag them back in. And there we go, we've got them back. Okay, so they're not lost but we'll keep them in server storage for now. And now we're gonna add in a new script using server script storage now. Add in a script, and we're gonna talk about services from the perspective of the script. Now, so far, whenever we wanted to refer to the workspace, we've just used the workspace keyword, and you can see it highlights blue. Uh, now, if we want to access any of these others, there aren't actually keywords for them. So if I wanted to access the players folder, for example, or let's go with the server storage, okay? Well, I can't type server storage, okay? That's not a keyword. So instead I need to type game and game refers to everything in the explorer window, okay? So I could type game dot workspace or I could type game dot server storage, for example. Now, really it's best practice, instead of just referring to dot, to say game and use the function get service. This way you can guarantee that you'll find the service because sometimes services aren't always located in the Explorer window. So let me give you an example of that. Let's say I wanted to use the Teams service, okay? So if I wanted to use the Teams service, you can see it comes up and it's suggested to me. So it knows Teams exists, but we haven't actually got the Teams service 
listed in this game area. It's not there. So if we want to access the teams, we will need to use get service. So generally it's good practice to use get service for all the services you want and not use uh, game dot. So anyway, we're gonna use the server storage, aren't we? So get service, server storage, and we see it's got their quotes around it. And then we're gonna create a variable for this. So server storage equals game get service storage, so server storage. And now we could say server storage dot. And what did we have in there? We had uh, the gnome rovers, okay? So we could access that gnome rovers. Remember it's in quotes and uh, those square brackets because it's got a space in the middle. And then I could say dot parent and make that equal to the workspace again. And if I run that, what's going to happen is it's going to move the Gnome Rovers from server storage and it will change its parent back into the workspace. And now you look, there they are, they've appeared back in the game. So what can we actually do with services that's a bit more useful? Well, a good example is using the players service. So let's create a new variable, players. And we'll set this equal to game get service quote players. And now I can access the, that player service. And players actually has a really cool event attached to it, which is the player added event. I'm going to take this event and hook it in to a function. So connect bracket function. And then this function takes a argument or parameter. So open close brackets. And the parameter is the player that's just been added. Okay, so that's our first line. Press new line and then that block completes. And all we're gonna do is we're gonna print out the name of that player who's just joined, okay? So if I click play now, we'll see down in the output, look, it says gnome code. So we can see I've just joined the game. And obviously if we looked in players, you can see obviously I'm there as well. Now let's see if we can make something a bit more interesting with services. Now I mentioned teams earlier. So let's create that variable again, teams equals game get service teams. Now we're gonna to want to add some teams. Now we can actually do this outside of our script and just in studio. We can actually add the team service. So if we go to the model tab, and you'll see over on the right is this service button. So we'll click there. And then if we scroll down, there's a few different options, but we can see teams here. We'll click insert. And then we should see this little folder with a sort of football right next to it. And now we can add in a team. So add in a team, we can give it a name. So our first team is the Gnome Rovers. And we'll keep their team color as white, I think. And then we're going to want a second team. So we'll copy it over. And the second team will be called Elf City. And maybe they can play in blue. So how about a, a dark blue color? Now, if I currently join the game, we can see right over the top here in the leaderboard sort of area player list, you can see it's auto assigning me onto the Gnome Rovers team. And if a second player was to join right now, they would be auto assigned onto the Elf City team. So we've already got two teams in our game, which is pretty cool, but they don't really uh, do anything. And if there was an Elf City player here right now, I wouldn't really be able to identify which team they were on. So how about we give ourselves some player kits for each team? So what we're gonna need to do is detect when a player joins each team. And we can do this using services and events together. So let's go back into our script. Now we've already got this player added event, but um, there's not just the player we want to know about, we want to know about their character themselves if we want to customize it. So inside this player added function, we're gonna actually nest a character added event. So player dot added, and we're gonna connect that 
to yet another function, so a function inside the function. And this takes a parameter as well, which is the character that has been loaded. So the player is just their object, and then the, the character is something that can be respawned multiple times, right? That's their physical avatar in the world. So uh, how about just to test this out, we will make the character dot head dot brick color and we'll make that equal to brick color dot red okay so just to test it out hopefully when we join now we should have a red head let's see and ah oh okay i think what's happened here is the uh the body colors property has a uh, reset it all okay if we want to get rid of that um let's give another example so character dot humanoid dot health it, and we'll set that to 10 okay so then we'll spawn in with low health 10 health and you can see right up here the top right i can see i've already got a health bar i've taken damage and if i click on my character on the humanoid we can confirm that the health is indeed uh well it's going going back up it's rehealing but it's 27 right now so you can see we can alter the properties of the character when they join the game so the properties that we want to alter, if we want to give them a team kit, is the pant and the shirt property. Now, my character doesn't actually wear any shirt. Uh, he just has the default part colors. And the pants, uh, they just give him some, uh, some studs. It's not very exciting pants. Um, but we need to change the templates for this. So thankfully, I've already got a shirt and pants that I want. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to click on the Gnome Rovers team. I'm going to add in a shirt object and I'm going to add in a pants object. And both of these, you see it has a pants template and a box for us to type in our ID. That's the ID you're going to take from the clothing catalog. Now I've already got mine, like I said, so I'm going to copy over my uh, shirt template, copy and paste that in. And I also copy and paste my pants template in now at the moment they're both just called clothing which isn't really very ideal we want to be able to distinguish between them both so we'll rename this one to shirt and this one to pants and then we want gnome rovers kit to be different to the elf city kit so i'm gonna select them both and copy and paste them over into elf city and then i'm gonna need to change the ids for elf city okay so i've got some for them as well now, at the moment, just having these shirt and pants objects inside the team, it's not going to do anything. If we want to apply it to our player, that's when our scripting comes in. So let's head into our script and now we can access the teams. So let's get rid of this and let's start off by finding out what team the player is on. So we can print out player.team. And now if we uh, run the game, well, actually, let's add to this. They'll say player dot name comma has joined quote comma player.team so then we'll print out that full message now print it out gnome code has joined gnome rovers so we know that's working and now what we need to do is fetch the right kit for them so let's create a variable team equals player.team and then we want to find the shirt so remember that's inside the team object. So we can say shirt equals team dot shirt and pants will equal team dot pants. And then all we need to do is we need to copy them into our new character that's just spawned in. So what we're going to do is we're going to colon clone them. Remember the clone function creates a copy of that object, colon, capital C, clone, open, close bracket. And once we've created a copy, well, we need to give that copy a new parent, a new place. And we want to place them inside of that character. So shirt.parent equals character and pants.parent equals character. So that should create copies of both of them. And now if we run the game, let's see if it's working. Oh, and we've got a little typo there. So let's go back. It looks like I've typed uh, T twice. 
There we go, pair it with one T. Let's try that again. And there we go, and you can see I've spawned in, oh, I've spawned in with the blue kit. It looks like I might have got those IDs the wrong way around there. But you can see the idea, I've now got my football kit on, which is pretty cool. Much better. Let me just go back and fix those IDs. There we go, I've got my white kit on, I've not got my IDs in the right order. So we can see we've now got our football kit for the Gnome Rovers team. And if we wanted to see the Elf City kit, uh, well to do that we'd need a second player. Now I could bring a friend in to help me, but I can actually just do this from inside studio. So if you didn't know, instead of just clicking play, you can actually use this local server area. And if we click start here, there's a drop down how many players we want. We want two players. So if we click start, what's going to happen is it's going to load up a little virtual server for ourselves and we can have as many players as we want. So this window here is the server. I can move around as I like and then eventually it's going to load up two clients for me. Here's one. And there we go. We can see we've got both players now bringing the second one. So you see I've got two windows open now. We've got our Elf City player and we've got our Gnome Rovers player. There we go. And if we were to reset, for example, when we load back in, it's going to fire that character added event yet again. And it's going to reload our clothing. There we go. So hopefully that's given you a bit of an idea of services and it can help you create your own cool little uh, character team based outfits. Next episode, we're going to be uh, talking a little bit about what this red underline means in our script. You might have noticed there's red underlines under each of these. What does that mean? Well, to find out, we're going to talk about it in the next episode. Thank you very much for watching, and goodbye!